Jake Freeman. Thank you very much. Oh, there's the music. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the Three Wise Men. I am Jake Freeman. Before I even get started, firstly a big round of applause to Dean for the jokes in between us. Thank you very much. And also a big round of applause to Adam and Tim earlier on. Thank you. So, like I said, this is the Three Wise Men, a show that was never meant to happen. It was a last minute decision to enter the show, hence the title. And when you're doing a show for the festival, you realise that you spend so much time talking about it, telling your friends to come, advertising on social media, you actually forget to write the material for the show. <laughs> True story. And I've been doing everything else. I'm being serious. I've done the flyers. I've done the interviews. I've handed out the flyers. I've done the photos. I've uh, been on everyone's, uh, spamming everyone's news feed. So thank you all for coming. You're welcome. I've been doing everything else except write the jokes for the show. Now, when I registered the show last October, uh, there were six months away. Plenty of time. Christmas, New Year's, plenty of time to write some jokes. Labor Day weekend, plenty of time. Easter, still a bit of time. And then it got closer and closer, and I'm like, it's actually really, like, now, now. And I was freaking out because this is the first time people are actually paying money to see me perform and tell jokes. $20 for tickets. $20. You could go to the movies with that. You could go to get the KFC uh, burger box meal, value box meal, whatever you call it. But no, you decided to come up, get changed, get dressed, make plans, come out here in the cold and see me perform some jokes which I have prepared for you while I was waiting to come on stage tonight. <laughs> and it's interesting, when you tell people you are a comedian, they think they are too. And for the past six months, it's been nothing but, Jake, oh, you're doing a comedy show. That's great. I'll write some jokes for you. Jake, do you want some ideas? Do you want me to write the show, Jake? Can I write the show for you, Jake? <laughs> Does it work in reverse? You can't be a comedian and tell a rocket scientist what to do on how to improve their job. I would like to, but I can't. Now, here's something that you may not know about me. I was born blind in my left eye. And I didn't see it coming. My parents didn't see it coming either. For the first few weeks I was alive, they weren't too sure what to call me. They went through the list of names. All right, what have we got here? Isaac? No. Ivan? Mm-mm. Isaiah? Not a chance. In the end, it was just with Jake. As far away as possible. Is there a jumping castle on top of us? What's going on? Yeah. All the next door. All the next door. Who knows? But they went with Jake as far away as possible. And of course, yeah, you're thinking, well, there's no real punchline to this joke, but it's okay. There's something funny in my line of sight here. Something I can see coming. Also in my line of sight is finding the right job. And because I'm single and I found that when you apply for jobs through a recruitment agency, it's a lot like dating. Picture this, you meet the recruiter, which is like meeting your girlfriend for the first time. If they like you, they put you forward to the client which is like meeting your girlfriend's parents for the first time. They ask you all sorts of questions, it gets awkward, and you just lie. It goes always like this. Jake, do you work well in a team-based environment? Yes. Jake, are you proficient in Microsoft Excel? Yes. Jake, do you work well under pressure? Yes. Why are we still asking that stupid question? Who is actually going to be honest? Whoever is going to be like, Bill, do you work well under pressure? <sighs> Look, I don't, okay? It gets too much, I get stressed, just <sighs> don't tell anyone, all right? As soon as they hear that, congratulations, you got the job. Welcome to KFC. <laughs> Go over there, make some value box meals for us, all right? But it's interesting when you do apply for jobs. Seriously, that, what is going on upstairs? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. I can do that too, you know? Let's all stomp together. But. When you do apply for jobs, you have to be prepared for that same word they use every time. Experience. You don't have enough customer service experience, corporate experience, advertising experience. We went with someone who had a bit more experience than you. What a coincidence. I just happened to be applying for the same job as someone else who happened to have the same background as me and a bit more experience than me. 
That is a huge coincidence. That is a bigger coincidence than in the Terminator films, how the very first person that the Terminator would run into would always have the same size clothes that he needed. <laughs> Every single time, the right fit. For once, I want to have a Terminator film where he runs into someone, gets their clothes, and it doesn't fit them, and having to deal with it. That's the movie. This is, this is how it works. Goes back in the time machine, kills someone, gets their clothes, puts it on, realizes it's one size too small. Goes back, so what does he do? He goes to the uh, alteration shop, goes back the next day, because it's Sunday and it's closed. So he goes on Monday, parks the car, waits in line, gives him the clothes, gets the ticket, comes back two to five business days, waits, parks the car again, waits in line again, gives him the ticket, puts it on, realizes it's still too small. That's the movie, which I call Terminator Alteration Day. <laughs> du -du 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 -du. Du -du 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 -du. In a cinema near you. I like my films with realism, so if I'm watching the James Bond film, there would only have been one, because no one is that good to survive the gun barrel sequence in the opening every single time. And I've been uh, doing some research lately for the show, obviously, because I had to write this show, which I just did tonight, like I told you. And I've discovered there is nothing more embarrassing in a human being's life than having to buy toilet paper. Everyone needs it. No one wants to be seen buying it. it always, every single time. If no one can, have you ever just gone to the supermarket and bought it alone without anything else? You can't do it. I mean, granted, I do see there's, there's always a few people I see walking down the street with the toilet paper pack on their back going, do 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 I don't know why the Terminator needs to buy toilet paper for. He's got enough, he's got enough issues with getting clothes that will fit him. But it's always interesting because people don't want to buy it alone. They always have to get other stuff to distract it, make it less obvious. I've seen it. They go in there, oh, all right, oh, you know, what can I get, what can I get? Uh, let's see, get a watermelon, uh, get a five kilo bag of ice, A3 sketchbook, which I won't even use. Even when they take it to the counter at the checkout, they cover it up. They, they, they're, too, they're, that, they're, they're that embarrassed. But if it's condoms, it's a different story. The checkout person's happy for you. Get on you, go for it, high five, proud of you. But when it's toilet paper, they give you that look. Ah, oh, and it's the cheapest brand you could get. And it's the 24 pack. And you live by yourself? Beep. A lot of weird things, a lot of crazy stuff I've been seeing lately. Just recently, no joke, there is an app on the phone that tells you when to go to the toilet during a movie. Firstly, why or how often do you need to go to the toilet during a movie? And second, why are you being dictated by an app to tell you when? Are we that pathetic? As human beings, we need to be told by a phone. And I've seen how it works. They, it gives you the running play-by-play -play synopsis and gives you, tells you the breakdown. And, tell, and someone, a genius, is being paid to tell you when is the most boring parts in the film to go. Who the hell are these people to tell me when I should and shouldn't go? How do they know which is the boring part in the film? I like my films, I know my films very much, thank you. And I can think of a better app to use, and it's for free, and it's called Common Sense. <laughs> Eventually you'll need to use it because there comes a time when the phone might die, or, the, <laughs> or when the Wi-Fi connections just might lie. <laughs> and it's interesting because, one, who is dumb enough to use this app? And two, why are they giving, because I've seen the reviews, they give these long essay, New York Times style reviews on the app and how good it is. If you haven't wet your pants by using this, the app is working for you, I can guarantee you. <laughs> A lot of crazy stuff going around, it really is. Same with all these elite private school boy schools. Part of the uniform is that they wear, they wear shorts all year round. They pay $40,000 a year school fees and they're wearing shorts all the time. If I'm paying $40,000 a year, I want some pants. Get the kids some pants. Maybe that's why it is. They give them everything else. By the end of it, they can't afford pants. Like they go to Europe, they learn another language, they play polo, they do horse riding, they travel. They just can't afford pants. There must be some discussion at the start of the school year where the parents say, son, 
you can have a choice. You can either do the year 10 work experience at NASA or we can get you some pants. We can't afford both. Don't worry, son, things will improve. It's in my line of sight. I can tell you now. A lot of weird stuff, I just don't get it. Like, one thing I hate is when we have overseas celebrities come on our talk shows and the talk show hosts always like to force feed them our food. Ever seen that? Every single time. There's, 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 there's two dreaded questions I hate when they ask them this. Have you tried Vegemite yet on toast? Have you tried Tim Tams yet? Here we got some. Here, here, bring it out. Tim, bring it out. There it is. Eat it. What do you think? It's nice. Here, I'll spread it for you if you want. Here, here, here. Get some butter as well. Now look at the camera. Now what do you think? Oh, this is the moment a whole of Australia has been waiting for. Why are we still doing this to people? Why are we so patronising them? Does it work the other way? Like, if I ever become a major star, and I know that one day I will be a huge star, a global star, you're ahead of me on this one, right? <laughs> well, someone is. If I become a huge star, though, do I go to America and go on The Tonight Show and Jimmy Fallon's there and he says, Jake, have you tried some apple pie? Have you tried some Pop-Tarts? Makes absolutely, I don't get it. I don't know why we do it. A lot of weird things. A lot of th people like to change things to make it sound better or e everything. It's like with con artists. I don't understand why they call them that. They lie, they cheat, they steal, but they're artists. <laughs> Makes it sound better. They're artists. <laughs> they're creative. They've studied from the best. They've learned the arts of the con artists. They're talented. They're artists. <laughs> like with organized crime. They'll ch the same. They'll steal from you. They'll cheat from you. They'll kill you. They'll do this to you and that to you. But they're organized. Organized? Yeah, go for it. Come on in. You're organized. You're good. <laughs> organized crime. That's fine with us. They've got secretaries. They've got diaries. They've got meetings. They're organized. They're proficient in Microsoft Excel. They know what they're doing. When they say we're going to shoot you at 7 o'clock, they mean it. They'll be there on time. It's in their line of sight too. I will leave you with this one thing. Can I just get it by a show of hands? Who has used in their lifetime a fake ID? And be honest, please. You have, you have. Did it work well for you? Uh, Help me buy booze when I was 17. Well, there you go. Like the, like the app. If it works, it works. One way or the other. Well, I had a friend when I was under 18. He had a fake ID. And I was curious, like most of you, to see how authentic it was. So I checked it out. So I saw it, photo looked okay, layout looked okay, looked pretty decent, legit. It was just the name of the area where the person lived that was a bit weird. The name of the area where the person lives was Hell Hole Creek. <laughs> what the hell in Hell Hole Creek? How's this place not been on the news? How has stuff not like happened here? I mean, good luck if you are uh, imagine just uh, being a guy trying to chat up to a girl in a nightclub with that. Come on, babe, let's go to my place. Where do you live? Hell Hole Creek. Come on, let's go. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be some serious stuff happening there. That, maybe there's some organized crime happening in Hell Hole Creek. Maybe that's the solution. I don't know. But how did they come up with this place? Did the guy, the early pioneers, hundreds of years ago, just go there and go, man, this place is a hell hole. Yeah, that'll do. We'll be fine. Good luck if you are a real estate agent. A beautiful house and land package on for sale in Hell Hole Creek. I would love it if they could do a segment on this place on a travel show like Getaway. That's why they would call it Getaway. You can go to Hell Hole Creek, but get away from here, seriously. There's a funny line to that, a funny punchline, but as all my jokes tonight, it's in my line of sight on improving. Guys, I've been Jake Freeman. Thank you so much. Three wise men. I want to call back onto the stage Adam and Tim just to give the final send off.